Hey there guys and welcome back. So in the previous video, we finished up building the entire website in Webflow, but there is a certain thing that we have to do to make sure that the website looks perfectly pixel perfect and exactly the way we want to on any device uh, with good spacing, with good font size, and make sure that it looks really well on every device that you see it on, whether you're seeing it on a tablet or a mobile phone, either in the port portrait view or the landscape view, we need to make sure that it looks really good. So for instance, let's take the original website of Design Plus Code. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just go ahead, right click, and I'm gonna choose Inspect. And when I choose Inspect, I'm gonna get all these sorts of code related stuff and you know, this kind of a preview thing. But you don't have to worry about it. The only thing you want to do is pay attention to this top section over here. You know, it says responsive. So since I'm using this desktop on a 1920 by 1080 uh, resolution, so I'm just gonna go ahead and you know, leave that to this. You can see this is how it's gonna look, you know, on a website that's 1920 by 1080. But what if it's different on probably a 4K monitor, or it's gonna look uh, much different. Um, so in this case, we already have it to look pretty much the way we want. And the only thing that's gonna happen is as the size of the monitor exceeds, uh, the empty space increases. So all the content stays right in the center of the entire website, all right? That's exactly what we want. Now, as you can see over here, the footer is actually, you know, increasing and decreasing in size based on the width. So you can either do that or you can either keep it in the center. Now, in this case, it's going to be in the center no matter how much I increase the width of the screen, uh, which is unlike this one because the footer space kind of increases based on the size of the monitor. Now, if you want to achieve that effect, what you would want to do is you would want to come over here. Um, you can go to the footer section. Um, then we can choose the footer grid. And what we can do is we can actually give it a certain width, which would probably mean something which is a percentage of the width of the entire screen. So if I say I want it to take up 75 VW, VW stands for viewport width. So the width of the entire screen, 75% of that is going to be taken over by the footer grid. I'm, I'm going to press hit enter. And now it's going to go ahead and, you know, make things a little bit different to match uh, the setting that I've just given. So for example, we could also go for 85 VW and that's gonna scale it up. So if my width of the screen is 1000 pixels wide, this whole thing is gonna take up 85% of that, which is 850 pixels. So there are two ways of doing this. You can either make sure that it doesn't move based on the screen size, or you can make sure that it changes based on the width. But in this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna reset this. Uh, we want it to be auto. so things don't mess around too much. So that's pretty much it. Now, what about in a tablet view or a desktop view? So for example, if you come over here, which is 768 pixels wide, the whole thing looks a little bit different, right? You can see it looks completely different. You know, it, we had three columns, so now we just have two columns and you know, things are a little different. So let's see how to do that. And also the footer looks completely different. So let's see how we can achieve that. So I'm gonna go back to Webflow over here and I'm going to click on the tablet view, all right? And now things are gonna get a little different and we have some lot of issues over here. You can see I can kind of swipe to the left and the right. Things are a little messy, all right? So the first thing you wanna do is, you know, we wanna go ahead and make sure that this navigation bar is still visible over here because what's happening is Webflow has defaulted to show the hamburger menu right at the tablet view, the mobile landscape view, and the mobile portrait view. But we don't want that. We want it to effect from the mobile landscape view. So a quick fix to that is if you select the navigation bar, you can come over here to the settings section and here you can choose. So menu icon for tablet and below, but I'm gonna change it to uh, phone landscape and below. And as, you, uh, and as you see, as soon as I drag that, we get our navigation menu bar right back as to where it usually was, just like the desktop view, pretty cool. So things are still messy, uh, they aren't perfect, so let's see how to fix that. All right, so let's, to, to take this as an example, let's come over here and we can just kind of reference this because ideally you would want a separate design made for the landscape view, the portrait view, and even the tablet view. But sometimes if your website is not complex enough, uh, such as this, our website is pretty simple, you can definitely go ahead and you know do it right on the spot. It wouldn't need much of an effort. All right, 
Cool. So let's start off. All right. So the first thing you want to do is play around with the navigation bar. So as you can see, the navigation wrapper is kind of wrapping around the entire uh, space over here, uh, which is exactly what we need. You can also come over here and click to drag to see how it looks on other sizes. Now, each of these sizes is called as a breakpoint. In simple terms, a breakpoint is basically the look of how the design looks on a different device, all right, or a different uh, category of device. So laptop is a breakpoint, tablet is a breakpoint, uh, mobile landscape is a breakpoint, and mobile portrait is a breakpoint. Because if you see over here, right at the bottom, you can see there are pixels, and as I just move over, it, it it's gonna show me what are the devices that support that breakpoint. So ideally, you would want to support all the ones that we have, and make sure that the design looks perfect. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come here to the navigation bar. And as you can see over here, the navigation bar is kind of exceeding a little bit outside, you know, the you know the width of the view over here. So one way to do that is to go back to the style and here in the width. Now, the reason it's doing that is because we define a certain width of 800 pixels. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and set that to auto, all right? So if I go set that to auto, you see now it's gonna come back over here. So auto basically means it's gonna take up the entire space of whatever it is allowed to. It's not gonna go ahead and break any rules. It's gonna go ahead and just confirm it to the size it has available. So that's pretty much it. So if I go here, you can see that it kind of increases, which is kind of exactly what we need, which is which is pretty good, all right? Yeah, it, it kind of breaks a little bit over here, but then that's completely fine. Or another thing you could do is instead of setting it to auto, you can set it to 100% of the width and it should probably do the same thing. And yeah, I mean, that, I mean that's, that, that's pretty good. Or another thing you can do is instead of setting it to 100%, uh, you could probably set it to 80%, all right? And that's gonna shrink it down, but maybe 80 is too much, so probably I'm gonna set it to 90%, and uh, it's gonna take up 90% of the space of the width it has. So as you can see, it kind of expands because it's taking up off because it's taking 90% of the space that it has, which is pretty good. But for this case, I'm just gonna leave it to 100%, and uh, that should be pretty good for now. Great. So the next thing is, now if you wanna check if the animation works, it definitely does work, so if I scroll down, you can see the animation still works perfectly as we want it to. Fantastic, great. So let's come back. Now, one thing that you wanna note is I made a change over here, which is from 800, I set it to 100%. But isn't that going to affect the landscape view? Let's check it out. So if I come over here, you can see that the width has been automatically changed to 800%. But on the tablet view, it's to 100%. The values are different on each breakpoint. So that's the best part. Any changes that you made cascade down the breakpoints, which means, to give a simple example, any change I make on the desktop gets affected on the tablet, the mobile landscape, and the mobile portrait. But any change I make on the tablet view does not affect the desktop view. It affects the landscape view and the portrait view. So if I make a change on the landscape view, it's gonna affect the landscape view and the mobile portrait view, but it is not going to affect the tablet view and the desktop view. So that's one thing that you wanna keep in mind when working with responsiveness. All right, so now let's go ahead and just move ahead and fix up the rest of the issues. Now as you can see, we have the hero wrapper over here. Now the hero wrapper is obviously exceeding because we gave it a width of 1000 pixels, but we want it to fit to the size of the screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that to um, auto or just 100%. So now what it's gonna do, that's gonna bring everything and make sure it is 100, 100% of the width of the screen. So it's gonna go ahead and shrink it down for us. So if I go ahead and expand it, you can see it it works perfect, that's awesome. But we don't want it to be so close to the edge, we wanna give it some spacing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the hero section over here, and the hero section is the parent element, and I'm gonna go give it a padding inside. So I'm gonna give it a padding of let's say 50 pixels, or maybe uh, 30 pixels, and here also a margin, a padding, sorry, of 30 pixels. So that pushes in the content a little bit inside. And as I move it, you can see it kind of breaks over here at the 991 breakpoint, but that's okay. Uh, we just need uh, these four breakpoints. If you, if I, you can see that there are four diamonds at the bottom. So 912 has the highest breakpoint. So that's pretty much what we want to uh, deal with. More than that, it kind of exceeds the tablet breakpoint and it enters the desktop breakpoint. So we just want to make sure that we are, you know, working with something over here. Perfect. So now this is looking pretty good. Now obviously you can go ahead and change the font size as well, but I think for the tablet view, it looks pretty good, so we can just leave it like so. All right, moving down, over here. 
So we've got the content section one over here. So let's go ahead and because this is the main section, let's go ahead and give that padding of 30 pixels and the same thing of 30 pixels right over here. All right, perfect. Now, another thing you can do is definitely reduce the distance between this because on tablet, we might not need so much spacing, but I think for this case, it's perfectly fine. Maybe on the mobile desk landscape view, we can go around and change it a little bit. Perfect. Okay, so now that this is done, we, we have this that's extending. So if you see over here, right here, um, these are in a two by two column grid. So we can quickly do that. So let's go ahead and select the content one grid. I'm gonna click over here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click and then just delete, uh, you know, just delete a column, sorry, not duplicate. You wanna go ahead and delete a column. All right, so now we do have two columns, but it's kind of weird and you know, it's kind of messed up over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and just close this up, just gonna click on done. And I'm gonna select this first link block that we have. And I'm gonna say column span one and row span one, all right? And that's gonna fix the issue for us. Pretty good. All right, so it kind of looks like this right now. So this is still not exactly how we want. So we're gonna quickly go ahead and fix that. So we're gonna select this link block and I'm gonna say um, column row two and two, all right? So there we go. Oh, sorry, not 32, two. So now it looks a little bit, it looks a little bit better, all right? So there we go. So we've got this, we've got this, we've got the files and this, but it's still exceeding the width of the entire space that we have. So we're gonna fix that. Let's select the content wrapper one. And here we gave it a maximum, a width of 1000 pixels, which is why it is exceeding the space that we have. So rather, I'm just gonna go ahead and set it to 100% and that's gonna go ahead. Now, even though I set it to 100%, it's not touching the edge of the screen. That's because we gave the content section a margin, which is why it's pushing that inside. A part, padding, sorry, not margin. And that's why it's pushing it inside. All right, now over here, you can see that um, things are getting a little messed up. So what we can do is we can select the H3 and we can reduce the font size of this from 40. Let's keep reducing it until it kind of looks good. So probably around 34 uh, looks good, or maybe we can set it to 32. And also the spacing over here, uh, we gave it a lot of 40. So we can probably reduce that down to 20 each, or maybe even 25. All right, so just go ahead and put 25 everywhere. And yeah, that looks that looks much better, all right? Um, obviously this, this is pretty big, so we can actually select this link block and uh, we can come here to the phone and we could reduce that down to say um, 345 to let's say 250 um, and it shrinks everything down, which is completely fine. Uh, we could do the same thing over here, select this. Um, 200, maybe 150 is a good number. Yeah, so yeah, you could just go ahead and play around with it. Yeah, now these hover interactions, we're gonna deal with that in a little bit, but first let's just go ahead and fix everything. Perfect, so let's just quick, quickly take a look at how it looks responsively, and uh, that looks pretty fine. It looks uh, pretty good, not bad. So the next one is the top download section. So we're gonna come to the content section. We're gonna give that inner padding of 30 and 30 here as well. All right, and we're gonna select the content wrapper two. Since we gave it a width of 1000 pixels, we wanna set that to 100%. There we go, and now that pushes it like this. But we would ideally want this to be in a two column grid and not a three column grid. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the content grid, select the grid icon, and then we're gonna change it um, from a three column to a two column, all right? And that sometimes automatically goes ahead and works well for us, and it puts it up neatly for us. This is exactly how we want it, which is fantastic. All right, up next, we've got this and we've got the uh, footer grid. So quickly to fix the footer grid, let's select the footer grid uh, or we can select the footer itself, which is because it's a section and we can give it that inner padding that we were talking about, that is 30 and we can give it 30 here as well, which looks pretty good. But in this case, we can come down and we can see that it's kind of in a uh, two by two column grid. Uh, so a way to do that, we'll have to go ahead, select this grid and then we would have to um, kind of reduce the spacing like so. And even probably we would have to go ahead and add in another row, all right? And click on done. And now we would have to take this footer block and actually drag it over here. But the thing is it's not getting dragged. So what we would have to do is let's go back to this. Uh, let's come back here and set it to manual. And then once it's manual, we can go ahead and drag it where we want. And uh, now we have this extra column grid. So we can just go ahead and delete the third column. And now we just have 
two columns all right now you can see there's some more spacing so we can just quickly go ahead and you know close this up and increase the spacing slightly uh, maybe around 30 pixels should do the trick and uh, this is pretty much it so if we scale it you can see this is how it kind of looks all right let's take a look how this looks yeah it's fine now let's take a look at how this looks in the tablet view and uh, this is looking uh, pretty good I'm not quite sure it's not showing uh, the bottom testimonials uh, the bottom copyright for for some reason so let me just quickly go ahead and set that to like uh, 1000 pixels so we can see what's happening yeah so uh, this looks completely fine I guess it looks uh, pretty good and yeah I think this looks pretty good so in the next video we're gonna go ahead and deal with the mobile landscape view and the mobile portrait view. So I'll see you guys in the next video.